Hi again, this is Andy, K4GKP, and welcome back to the Hand Whisper and Lesson 6 in the General Class Operator Element 3 exam. In this lesson, we go over these G2A questions, which pretty much deals with phone operating procedures. Alright, specifically, the G2A questions go over phone operating procedures, USB, LSB utilization conventions, procedural signals, breaking into a QSO in progress, and Vox operation. Alright, for the first question. Which sideband is most commonly used for phone communication on the bands above 20 meters? Well, upper sideband or USB is most often used from 20 meters and above. So if you can remember upper and associate that with higher HF band frequencies, you'll, you'll have no problem with this question. Which sideband is commonly used on the 160, 75, and 40 meter bands? Well, lower sideband, or LSB, is most commonly used on the lower HF bands. So if you remember that 20 meters and higher is upper sideband, so 20 meters lower, or lower than 20 meters would be lower sideband. So that should help. Which sideband is commonly used in the VHF and UHF bands? All right, so if you think of, on the trend here, if VHF and UHF are higher bands than 20 meters, it would be upper sideband again. So we're still dealing with higher frequencies, upper, higher, that should help. Which mode is most commonly used for voice communications on the 17 and 12 meter bands? Well, once again, we're in the same theme. The theory is holding true. It's a higher band, it's a higher frequency than 20 meters, so it'd be upper side band. Which mode of voice communication is most commonly used on the high frequency amateur bands? Well, high frequency or HF amateur bands usually use a single side band or SSB. And if you remember that upper and lower sideband modes are a form of single sideband, this is the only possible sideband answer. So um, single sideband is most commonly used on HF frequencies. Which of the following is an advantage when using single sideband as compared to other voice modes on HF amateur bands? Well, single sideband creates less bandwidth and it's a higher power efficiency, which is kind of what you're striving for in a lot of modes as far as amateur radio goes. So land, less bandwidth is good, and for voice communication, single sideband is best. Which of the following statements is true of the single sideband voice mode? Well, the, the true statement of the possible answers is only one sideband is transmitted, the other sideband and carrier are suppressed. And without getting into too much theory about this, in upper sideband, the lower half is suppressed, in lower sideband, the upper half is suppressed. So that's kind of the relationship through, through that whole thing. So if you can see that connection, that will help out. So the true statement about single sideband voice mode is only one sideband is transmitted, the other sideband and carrier are suppressed. Which of the following statements is true of single sideband voice mode? All right, for this one, even though it's the same question, the answer is different. It, it is a form of amplitude modulation in which one sideband and the carrier are suppressed. So it gives a little bit more detail than the previous question. And what you're looking for is the word sideband in the answer. It's the only one of the possible answers with the word sideband in it. Also, it's good to remember that single sideband is a form of amplitude modulation, or AM. So if you can remember sideband, you get it right, but if you can remember that amplitude modulation is part of it too, that'll help. Why do most amateur stations use lower sideband on the 160, 75, and 40 meter bands? All right, this is a pretty easy answer. The current amateur practice is to use lower sideband on these frequency bands. So it's pretty much, that's the answer, and the reason is is because just everybody's doing it. It's peer pressure. There's nothing legal about it, and it has nothing to do with performance. But like I said, it's peer pressure. Everybody's doing it. Which of the following statements is true of Vox operation? Well, of the possible answers, Vox allows hands-free operation. So Vox is a function that keys your transmitter when the noise level of your microphone exceeds a certain level, so you don't have to push the push to talk button. It's done electronically for you by your voice. You can just start talking in your mic and, and your transmitter clicks on. So it has nothing to do with improved performance, which is one of the questions that they might throw you on the exam. Which of the following user adjustable controls are usually associated with Vox circuitry? And this is one of those all of the above questions. The answers are anti-Vox, Vox delay, and Vox sensitivity. And just remember, you, can't, you can adjust the delay and sensitivity of the Vox function on your transmitter, and the rest should fall into place. So anti-Vox, Vox delay, and Vox sensitivity are all controls which are usually associated with Vox circuitry. What is the recommended way to break into a conversation when using phone? 
Well, the recommended way to do it is say your call sign during a break between transmissions from the other station. Um, so basically you wait for a lull in the conversation, you drop your call sign. And you don't really want to say break, break, break because that can sometimes be confused with emergency communications and if you're just in for friendly conversation, just drop your call sign when there's a pause in the, the transmission. What does the expression CQDX usually indicate? Well, CQDX usually indicates the caller is looking for any station outside their own country, so they're looking for a DX contact. So CQ is to call any station, and adding DX narrows that down a bit. So it's not really any station, it's any station not in their own country. So you can tell where a station is located by its call sign, and if you hear CQDX and you are not DX, it's a little rude to answer. So be polite and just let them go. And uh, so CQDX is calling any station not in my country. And it's time for the G2A quiz. So take out a piece of paper, number 1 through 13, and when you're done with the quiz, you can find the answers at hamwhisper.com under the exam answers page under the G2A section. So with that said, let's get started on the quiz. Question 1. Which sideband is most commonly used for phone communications on the bands above 20 meters? A. Upper sideband. B. Lower sideband. C. Vestigial sideband. Or D. Double sideband. Question 2. Which sideband is commonly used on the 160, 75, and 40 meter bands? A. Upper sideband. B. Lower sideband. C. Vestigial sideband. Or D. Double sideband. Question 3. Which sideband is commonly used in the VHF and UHF sidebands? A. Upper sideband. B. Lower sideband. C. Vestigial sideband. Or D. Double sideband. Question 4. Which mode is most commonly used for voice communications on the 17 and 12 meter bands? A. Upper sideband. B. Lower sideband. C. Vestigial sideband. Or D. Double sideband. Question 5. Which mode of voice communication is most commonly used on the high frequency amateur bands? A. FM. B. AM. C. SSB. Or D. PM. Question 6. Which of the following is an advantage when using single sideband as compared to other voice modes on the HF amateur bands? A. Very high fidelity voice modulation. B. Less bandwidth used and high power efficiency. C. Ease of tuning on receive. Or D. Less subject to static crashes, atmospherics. Which of the following statements is true of the single sideband voice mode? A. Only one sideband and the carrier are transmitted, the other sideband is suppressed. B. Only one sideband is transmitted, the other sideband and carrier are suppressed. C. Single sideband voice transmissions have higher average power than any other mode. Or D. Single sideband is the only mode that is authorized on the 160, 75, and 40 meter amateur bands. Question 8. Which of the following statements is true of single sideband voice mode? A. It's a form of amplitude modulation in which one sideband and the carrier are suppressed. B. It's a form of frequency modulation in which higher frequencies are emphasized. C. It reproduces upper frequencies more efficiency than lower frequencies. Or D. It is the only voice mode authorized on the HF bands between 14 and 30 megahertz. Question 9. Why do most amateur stations use lower sideband on the 160, 75, and 40 meter bands? A. The lower sideband is more efficient at these frequency bands. B. The lower sideband is the only sideband legal on these frequency bands. C. Because it is fully compatible with an AM detector. Or D. Current amateur practice is to use lower sideband on these frequency bands. Question 10. Which of the following statements is true of box operation? A. The received signal is more natural sounding. B. Box allows hands-free operation. C. Frequency spectrum is conserved. Or D. The duty cycle of the transmitter is reduced. Question 11. Which of the following user adjustable controls are usually associated with box circuitry? A. Anti-box. B. Box delay. C. Box sensitivity. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 12. What is the recommended way to break into a conversation when using phone? A. Say QRZ several times followed by your call sign. B. Say your call sign during a break between transmissions from the other stations. 
C, say break, 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 and wait for a response. Or D, say CQ, followed by the call sign of either station. And question 13. What does the expression CQDX usually indicate? A, a general call for any station. B, the caller is listening for a station in Germany. C, the caller is looking for any station outside their own country. Or D, this is a form of distress call. And that's it for the quiz and lesson six. For the answers to the quiz, you can go to hamwhisper.com and check under the exam answers page. You can find it under the G2A questions. So until next time at lesson seven, this is Andy K4GKP saying 73, and I uh, hope to hear you on the air soon.